Welcome back. In the last lecture, we talked about the efficiency of encodings, and we said what you really want to do is um, encode most efficiently the symbols which are most probable in a, in a language scenario. Today, we're going to introduce a technical notion which attempts to capture that, that idea. All right, so re recall this language. We have a, a coin that we're flipping, and so it's generating heads and tails, and we're thinking of that as a language, T's and H's, or however you want to represent them. Um, suppose also that you know that it's a fair coin. If it's a fair coin, what does that mean? It means that when you flip it, heads are equally likely with tails. That is, you're going to get about as many heads as tails. Uh, all right, so then we can come up with a pretty easy, naive encoding of this language. In particular, we'll assign zero to heads and, and uh, one to tails. And we also know the probabilities are one half for each of these symbols. Okay, so that's a pretty good encoding. The answer, or the question that we want to ask is, could we do any better than that? Okay, so here's a claim I'd like to make. If you know the probabilities of symbols in a language, you can figure out what the best possible encoding is, or at least a measure of the best possible encoding. So for our fair coin example, we can actually compute that the best possible encoding for this language uses on average one bit per symbol. And notice that our naive encoding uses one bit per symbol. And so in a sense, our naive encoding is the optimal encoding for this language. The notion that we want to introduce here is called entropy. And entropy is defined as follows. The entropy of a language is a measure of the information content of an average symbol in the language. Okay, so how do we figure out the entropy of a language? Well, we do it with this formula. So if P sub i is the probability of the ith symbol in the language, then we compute the, the, the entropy as follows. We just multiply the probability of a symbol times the log base two of the probability, add all those up, stick a minus out in front of this quantity, and that's it. I'll show you an example in just a second. And all of the logs that we're going to be dealing with here are logs base two. So for example, we've got our fair coin example. Um, here, two symbols in the language. Each of them have probability one half. And so we just take those probabilities and we plug them into the formula and we compute the answer. So the h is minus one half times the log of one half plus one half times the log of one half. And if you compute that on your calculator, you'll see that that's a one, right? Okay, so what does that one mean? Well, it means several things. The first thing it means is on average, each time you flip that coin, you're generating one bit of entropy or one bit of information, okay? That's not really very surprising. You might, you know, if you just think about the scenario, you might figure that out. But it also means the following thing. It's impossible to find an encoding for this language that uses less than one bit per symbol on average. And that's pretty important. That says that our naive encoding is the best we can do. We couldn't possibly find an encoding which is any better than that. And any, any encoding that uses one bit per symbol on average, as our naive encoding does, is optimal. Okay? Right. So a special case of entropy that applies in this case uh, is if you plug that into the formula, you'll see that the entropy of a language in which you have n symbols, where all of them are equally likely, is just the log base 2 of n. So for example, in our, in our uh, language where we were rolling a die that had six, six sides, <coughs> excuse me, um, the entropy of that language is just log base 2 of 6, which is around 2.58. And what that means is that, on average, to transmit that language requires 2.58 bits uh, in, in the best possible encoding. Okay, as a slightly different example, suppose that we're flipping our coin again, but this time it's an unbalanced coin. So now heads comes up three times as, as often as tails. Um, so what is the entropy of this language? Well, once again, we, we have a chart that shows the two possible symbols, H and T, 
and assign the probabilities to those. Uh, the probability of heads is three-fourths. The probability of tails is one-fourth. Just as an aside, if you ever build a table like this, make sure that your probabilities add up to one, because if they don't, you've messed something up. Okay, so now we plug those probabilities into our formula, and we see in this case, the entropy is minus three-fourths times the log of three-fourths plus one-fourth times the log of one-fourth. And if you plug that into your calculator, you'll see that the answer is approximately 0.811 bits. Right, so what does that mean? Well, it means that for this language, you can't find an encoding that does any better on average than 0.811 bits per symbol. Now, you may be wondering how you could ever come up with an encoding that does better than one bit per symbol, but we'll get to that in our next lecture. Okay, so what have we said? We said that given the probability of symbols in a language, you can compute the entropy. And what the entropy is, is a measure of the information content of the language in terms of the average information content of a symbol in the language. And entropy then gives us a lower limit on the encoding efficiency for that language. Meaning that if you know the entropy and you have an encoding, you can measure the efficiency of the encoding and you also can't do any better than an encoding which, which matches the entropy. Thank you.